The Game Day Broadcast Network is proud to present Game Day All Access Worldwide online at gamedaymagazine.com with host Andy Hayes. He's got some running room for it. Makes a cut. Pass midfield. He's gone. 30, 20, 10. Go line. Touchdown. And Bruce Bornarth. Jet down the sideline. Get through. Touchdown. Game Day All Access is proudly presented by Integrated Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy. Get back in the game. The game of life. The game on the field. Manhattan Pizza. Now serving Ashburn, South Riding, and Leesburg with the best dang pizza in the world. By Max Muscle Sports Nutrition. Max Muscle. Partners in health. By Online Mental Trainer. Optimal thinking. Champion results. Visit ReadWriteTechnology.com. Verizon Wireless. The exclusive wireless network of the Game Day Broadcast Network. Game Day All Access. Become a Game Day MVP member today and never miss another big game. Phenom Strength and Conditioning, where athletes train to exceed expectations. We've now been granted a Game Day All Access Pass. Now let's join the worst prognosticators in high school sports on the Game Day Broadcast Network. Welcome to another episode of Game Day All Access here on the Game Day Broadcast Network. I'm Andy Hayes, joined alongside the incumbent, Bruce Bornarth, and the contender, Ben Simpson. How are you guys doing today? Everything good? Everything's good, man. Tigers in the World Series. I can't complain. Ben is smiling ear to ear, Bruce. I mean, all his teams are doing well except the Lions. We don't want to talk well, about now, that. Right now you make me a little nervous. You call me the incumbent and the challenger. Does that mean my seat's up for grabs? You know what, man? Everybody's got to be replaced at some point, right? I mean, that's, you know, we'll find out if our president's replaced next week. We're going to talk about this later in the show. Go vote. That's the first little selling point here. A big, big opportunity for our country at this point. One way or the other, doesn't matter how you vote, but go vote. All right, time for us to vote on what we liked about last week's high school football here. And we had a great, we had a great weekend, I thought. Some great games, some surprising games here. And we'll start talking about Battlefield Broad Run. And before we get going, Bruce set the record straight. We called the Maroon crew out a little bit. They responded with a bunch of tweets and said, you guys are in for a show from us here down there. Give us the report. How did the Maroon crew show up first in the stands before we talk about the game? The, the question isn't how did the Maroon crew show up. The question is where is the Maroon crew still almost a week later? Really? They didn't um, show up in your no, opinion? No, they didn't show up. I was going to go over a visit, was going to take a picture with them and all and, and take my lumps and, and everything and, and accept my beating. And I kept looking across and looking across and looking across. There's nobody there. So maybe it's just too far a trip. I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I, I know this. Alumni had a reunion a couple weeks ago, of which I'm a proud one. We brought it. The alumni brought it. Now, I understand it's a long way to go, so I, I'm not going to call anybody out. You know, reasons are reasons. What happens, happens. Well, they were calling us out that we didn't take a picture well, with them. Well, see, but, now that's – that, Now, you're explaining it that, that they weren't there yet. That's what's a little bit unsettling here. Now, we go on air 15 minutes before game time. It, it was well, well into the game before we looked over there and saw any – resemblance of a student section over there. And then it was, I don't know, maybe 2% of the bleachers, one little, little pocket of a section down in the bottom far corner of the bleachers. That, that, that was it. But right. well, I, this it, is a no spin factor right here. Bruce is just telling it like it is, right? It, it's on film. It's on it, film. The video doesn't lie. The video so doesn't lie. don't get upset at us. We didn't take a picture. You guys weren't there yet. All right, Bruce, let's talk about the game. Weren't there yet. They weren't there at the end. <laughs> let's talk about the game before we get them riled up again. Broad Run had a tough night. Battlefield came to play, and we, we talked about it last week. You, know, you pick against Battlefield, you typically lose. It, this is a quality program that knows how to win big games. It, it is, and especially at home, it, it's kind of like one of those cliches, been there, done that for Battlefield. They, there's no panic. You know, they, they get out of the gate quickly, and – you know, Broad Run ties it up on, on a long 55-yard run or so around the end. But, but Battlefield really controlled the line of scrimmage in that game. Broad Run had a tough time running up the middle. When the Spartans did get to the edges and all, they had, had some time. That was a wet field. It rained earlier in the day. It was nice and slick. Contributed maybe to some of the missed passes along the way. But let me tell you this. Broad Run can play. That there's a lot of talent on that team that, that's coming together. They're only 0-1 in the district right now with the rest of the season to go. Huge game against Stonewall this week for the Spartans. And I think Broad Run can make some noise if they get in the playoff. There's talent on that team. They can play. They can play defense. They had one situation where the receiver 
uh, the defender slipped and the receiver ended up scoring. I think it was Battlefield's first touchdown. So, you know, the score is not indicative of really how close that game was. And, and you know, Broad Run is a young team. They've got a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. They're going to be fine. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on to our next game here. Talking a little bit about the westfield Oakton game. This is what Ben Simpson had a chance to call here on Friday night. And, Ben, you know, we, we kind of thought that Oakton's 6-0 and record going into their Concord play may have been a little bit deceiving in the sense that they hadn't played anybody really tough. Uh, and, and they took it on the chin to Chantilly the week before. They came in to play Westfield. Now, they gave Westfield a pretty decent game, didn't they? I think they did. And the way this one started appeared it was going to be a complete shootout. You know, each team was getting uh, putting together some pretty great drives. Oakton was definitely impressive in the first half. It was in the second half where they kind of struggled. There were some scoring situations that they just couldn't convert. They had a chance where they got a pick deep in Westfield zone, ended up having to settle for a field goal, which they missed. And then another chance they ended up stopping, uh, forcing a three and out for Westfield. They got the ball back. They got all the way down to inside the red zone, and they couldn't get anything out of it. I mean, for Oakton, it was missed opportunities in this one, but there's still a lot of positive with Downer played a terrific game. I mean, the, the rushing attack was completely there for him. But Westfield is just so you, – you have to play perfect football to beat Westfield, and Oakton just didn't do that tonight. Yeah, I think the one thing that we're, we're seeing about this Westfield team is they're going to put up their 28-35 every game. I mean, you, you, can, you can stop them from time to time. You're not going to stop them all game. So you better be able to score, and you better be able to keep pace with them. And that's something that Oakton could not do here in this game. But Oakton is a quality club. I think people are, will see this as the season goes on. They're in the playoffs. They're going to be a problem for people. And once you get down that road in the postseason, anything can happen. So don't give up hope here, Cougar fans. There is some, some hope down the road here for you in the postseason. All right, moving ahead to the next game, Stonebridge taking on McLean at home. This was a big game here for the, the kids to come back out of Stonebridge, celebrate, uh, you know, get, get excited about uh, – you know, another Liberty District game where they've got a chance here now to go to 8-0. And, and Stonebridge took care of business. Uh, Ryan Burns and crew really played well. And the one thing that you got to say about Stonebridge right now, defensively, they're just they're the best defense in the area. I mean, hands down, that's what I think. McLean really couldn't do a whole lot in this game. Nothing's been close for Stonebridge. We've seen this in years past, Bruce, where Stonebridge plays all these games where it's lopsided. Does it help him or does it hurt him? I think at this point you say from Stonebridge it, 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 it doesn't hurt them. I don't know that does it really help them. It doesn't hurt them because it's happened a lot in the past, like Andy said. It just it, It's just business as usual, I guess, for the Bulldogs. They know how to handle this. They've been through it before. Ben, your thoughts on, uh, you know, now we set up this week here with Stonebridge-Madison. You know, Stonebridge looks like they're hitting on all cylinders, don't they? Yeah, and this is a perfect time for them to be doing that, especially heading into this game against a red-hot Madison team who lost the first game of the season. They've won every game since. So uh, for Stonebridge, if they're going to if they're gonna keep playing the way they've been playing the past couple weeks, that will serve them real well playing against Madison. Yeah, they need this game coming up. We're going to talk more about that in Inside the Huddle. I think Stonebridge needs a test right now in this season. All right, moving on to Madison. Big win for Madison. Now, they fell behind in this game to Fairfax. And I was looking at the scoreboard on this one because I picked Madison in the game, and I was thinking, oh, here we go. Fairfax is going to prove me wrong again. Well, Coach Simon's club played really well. Nick Scott had some great runs, one touchdown over 80 yards, one over 50, I think it was. And, and this young man has really had a great season. If you had a chance to see Nick Scott, you're lucky because he's a good player, and he's a lot of fun to watch here, especially on the replays here at GameDayMagazine.com. But the one thing you got to say about Madison, there's a little magic here with the Warhawks. They find a way to win football games. 28-21, final score. Lenny Schultz, got to be up for coach of the year candidate here based on what he's done this year with this team. You lose to Oakton, as Ben said, you win seven straight games. There's not a hotter team in the state of Virginia right now than the Madison Warhawks. They're not doing it pretty, but they're doing it, Bruce, and that's a lot of times well, that's the only thing They're doing it and getting done. I wouldn't you know, jump up for joy and say how hot they are. But what is impressive about Madison this year that we haven't seen, I don't think, in years past, if, I, if the scoreboard was right, and why question the game day scoreboard, it's always right, one of the scores I saw was 21-14 Fairfax, which means Madison doubled up to 28, scored the last two touchdowns to go ahead and win that game. We haven't seen that 
often enough out of Madison in the past, and, and that's that's that resilience late in the game, come back and finish. We've seen the Warhawks start off early, but when it's all said and done, it's the same old story. They, they don't find a way to win or they don't have enough – at the end, I think that's the difference this year, and that's why they are so high. They can yeah. finish now. They're, they're taking care of business when it matters down the stretch. And Madison at 7-1. and one. What a great story here. Warhawks in position to knock off the Bulldogs and win the Liberty District. That could happen this week. They're the only team now to ever beat Stonebridge. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. All right, let's move on to the next ball game here. And, hey, it was Hilton in one of the great games we've had on the network in 2012. They were behind. Woodbridge had them on the ropes with 50 seconds left in the game. The Vikings kick it off to Hilton. They return the kick for a touchdown, Bruce. And Hilton holds on to win 20-15. to Tim Blank lost his voice and nearly passed out calling that, that last touchdown call. Let's let you check it out here on the final play here in this one that decided this game. Here's the call from Tim Blank. Fifty seconds left to go in this one, and Woodbridge is up by a point. But we know better than anyone that that Hilton return game is as deadly and dangerous as any as any teams return as any teams in the entire state. Yeah, that that is true. This so young man. We're going to see what they have in store here. I'm almost wondering if they would just just as soon start them on the 35-yard line to prevent kicking it to that. It's just going to be a little a squibbler right there. And it's taken. And he's got himself an opening. And he's going down the sideline. He beats his man. He got tripped up. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Are Hilton. you kidding me? Holy cow. What the heck just happened here? A miracle. What did just happen? A miracle on Spriggs Road! Wow! Are you kidding me? Unbelievable! A squib kick to keep it away from the hands of Radford. And it goes into the hands of Lawrence Hunt. And he takes it the distance for the touchdown. We've had some games like that ourselves. Ben, you, you know the same thing. That's one of those you dream of as a, as a sports broadcaster, right? I mean, th- those are things you put in your, your archives and go, hey, remember this one? I mean, wow, what a finish. Oh, you, you know, and we talked about this, what, three, four weeks ago. said as teams started getting into their district play, look out because we are in for some barn burners. You know, we, we can't predict football games and scores, but we can certainly – look to the future and say, you know, everything's setting up that this is going to be an exciting finish. Yeah, it really is. And, and a great win for Tony Lilly's club. It's a great rivalry down there. I mean, the Battle of Woodbridge, you know, we got the Battle of Ashburn, the Battle of Leesburg, the Battle of Percival. You know, now you got the Battle of Woodbridge, and it's really turning into a neat game every year. Tough one for the Vikings, but I think they will respond. They're a good football team. Hilton escaping with a close win. Great finish, though. All right, moving on to our game of the week, and we'll talk a little bit about Centerville and Chantilly here. And Centerville looked like they were in trouble. First quarter, they were down 17 to nothing. And then all of a sudden, the tide turned. And, Bruce, we've seen it in the past. You know, the hot team comes in. They throw the ball. Everything's working. They're running the ball. Everything's going well. All of a sudden, it just stops cold. And the next team comes in and says, not happening tonight. That's what happened here. Centerville eventually put 45 points on the board to Chantilly's 31. The Chargers with some key turnovers in this game, especially in the first half, that stopped all of their momentum. And Centerville was able to come away with a huge Concord win. And that sets up a big showdown with Westfield this week. Well, I think that is a tribute to the Centerville coaching staff that there's no panic. You're down 17 to nothing early in the game. You, you turn around and you're going, what happened? Well, the coaches keep everybody in line and the leadership on that team. And I think it helps that Centerville, uh, either the last two weeks or skip a week, two weeks prior to that, they went back-to-back overtime games. So that that really kind of sets the stage for that or gives you that confidence that that no panic attitude that, yes, we can get this done. Well, Chantilly is going to have to pick themselves off, off the mat right now. Like, they cannot afford now, with Robinson still waiting in the wings down the stretch here, they can't afford 
to lose confidence and, and kind of slide away. And that's really what's at risk for Coach Lally's club here because they're going to probably go into the postseason as a 3-4 seed in these playoffs. Centerville has a chance here to capture the number two seed with a win, possibly even the number one seed, if they can beat Westfield. And the one thing I'll say about this Centerville team, you saw them earlier in the year, you've seen them also. Speed. A.J. Turner. Yes. Wow, what a great player. And the other thing they have is they've got youth that does not understand how to get down on themselves because they just don't have any reason to look back and go, oh, we used to do that. Oh, no, no. They don't think. They just keep playing. And eventually, <laughs> they start scoring touchdowns. I mean, they're, they're amazing. It's all about short-term memory. It really is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you get the youth out there and it's like, uh, what happened on the last play? I don't know. Let's just get on to the next one. <laughs> they, don't have a, they don't have a long list, a laundry list of bad things that have happened in the past. The, the sophomore class at Centerville, and I'm, I'm here to tell you now, these two guys have been bragging on for a couple weeks here. I'm with you. I'm a fan. And I'm going to tell you, you're not going to want to see Centerville next year and the year after. No. Forget it. This will be the top team in the area over the next couple of years. But they aren't waiting for next year. I, I think this week right here will be a telling week for how good this Centerville team can be because they're special. They've got some magic with them, and Coach Chris Haddock doing a great job down there with a lot of young kids. I mean, that's exciting stuff. We also had a chance to see the Wildcat Nation in the stands. I tell you, they're loving on game day. Had a nice big poster up there. Bruce, you know, you got to get out there with these people. They, they need to blow up some posters of you. It, because it makes you feel good, right? I mean, they, they knew right away. That's how you win the spirit battle. Boom. Done deal. It, it's about time somebody's loving on us. All the lumps <laughs> we've been taking this season. Yeah, that's right. It was a fun, great atmosphere. Wildcat Nation winning the spirit battle. And uh, that, that rounds out our game day rewind. We'll step aside, come back here with Inside the Huddle. Ben's getting ready to throw some long passes here to us. We'll see if we can chase him down here in True or False coming up here right after this. Hey, Hayes, high school football is back. Who's going to be the best team in Ashburn? I don't know, Carl. I'm not touching that one either, buddy. That's highly controversial right now. Hey, didn't you win a Picks of the Week last year? Hey, yeah, that's accurate, Carl. Hey, it's hard to be a champion. I'm working hard in the offseason here to repeat this fall. Hey, I heard a rumor that uh, your producer, Helene, is the one that wins that every year. You know what they say about rumors, Carl? Only some of them are true. So what's it going to take, Hayes, for you to defend your championship? Well, the thing is, Carl, only a select few have what it takes to be a champion. And the knowledge of how they get to that point is highly proprietary. I can't share that with you. Yeah, whatever. High school football fans, don't miss Game Day All Access each week online at gamedaymagazine.com. Dive into the area's best storylines and break down the biggest games to get you ready for the Friday Night Lights. Game Day All Access, weekdays online at gamedaymagazine.com. There's only one game day. 4G LTE has the fastest speeds. So let's talk about coverage. Based on this chart, who would you choose? Wow. <laughs> Just take a minute. Verizon, hands down. I'm going to show you guys another chart. <laughs> pretty obvious. I don't think color matters. Pretty obvious. What's pretty obvious about it? The Verizon has the coverage. <laughs> Verizon. Verizon. We're going to go to another chart. It doesn't really matter how you present it. I it doesn't matter how you present it. Verizon. More 4G LTE coverage than all other networks combined. Visit the Game Day Broadcast Network on Facebook to receive expanded coverage of high school sports in Northern Virginia. Facebook.com backslash Game Day Broadcast. And follow Game Day on Twitter. Visit Twitter.com backslash GBN Mobile and follow your favorite team with Game Day's exclusive television shows online at GameDayMagazine.com. Join the network today and make Game Day your home online. Welcome back to Game Day All Access. Andy Hayes alongside Bruce Bournorth, Ben Simpson here on the Game Day Broadcast Network. And uh, right now it's time for Inside the Huddle. And we're getting set to play a little true or false. Ben, you've created the questions this week. Yeah. I thought you did a nice job. 
Yeah, a little well, different twist on some things. I liked it. Yeah, just try to try to mix it up a little bit. Try to give Bruce some good questions. He, he talks sometimes each week. There's maybe not the right questions in there. So we got true or false, and Bruce. He's, he's a little bit of a complainer. Yeah, he complains. No, no, he'll probably complain about your questions. Uh, well, this first one I know he's going to complain yeah, about right off the bat. Let's let him start. I like South it. County will they win the region? True or false? Start with you, Bruce. False. At best, South County is the number three seed in that region behind Stonebridge and Madison at this point. Madison, I can't believe I actually said that. Well, they won't be the three seed because Yorktown's still in the well, three no, seed. Well, no, no, but no, but. but you're I, saying the third best team. I understand like, that, yeah, yes. Yeah. At, at, at very best. Right. You know, if you were ranking them and seeding them, who has the odds to win the region? In my mind, they're no better than third. This, this is a different Stonebridge team this year. And that's why this is a false statement here because. South County caught Stonebridge in a year where they weren't quite what they've been in the past. Not the case this year. South County is not the same. Stonebridge, not the same either. And that it doesn't matter, in my opinion, who plays Stonebridge in Division 5. They will not beat Stonebridge in 2012. The Bulldogs will win the Northern Region. Mark it down. It's going to happen. All right, South County does finish uh, against Annandale and Woodson to end their regular season. And the one thing is, if they if they do finish with two ends and they're five and five, they're in, right? And they could yeah. get in at four and six, and they're a team you don't want to see. It could still be Stonebridge South County in the regional championship game because of their athletes and and their experience. So, I mean, it's a good question because I don't think anybody's expecting South County to even be in that conversation, but they will be. They'll be in the mix here if yeah, they get in. they got to get these final two wins of their season. Moving on, true or false, Concord, does it have the best collection of quarterbacks? This is a great question. I, I, I want to say false for the reason that I think the Patriot District with Caleb Henderson has the guy that everybody's saying is the best quarterback in the area. But if you look at Chris Mullins' stats and you look at what he's done at Westfield, I mean, he's put the same kind of numbers up. I mean, he, he doesn't throw it as many times as Henderson does. But passing efficiency, you know, his ability to throw the ball down the field, the routine passes, he's been awesome. You know, I like what I'm seeing out of some of the younger quarterbacks, but I don't think we can say Concord District quarterbacks are superior to everybody else. I'm going to say false on this one. Although I like Mullins and, and I put him up against Henderson, I don't think the Concord has the best set of quarterbacks. You know, I'm going to say it's false as well. You start looking around the area, and I would take exception maybe, or, or maybe throw up an alternative for the best quarterback in the area. And if you, want, if you can get a shot right here in the middle, what about my guy Trace McSorley at Briarwoods? Who's better than that guy? I mean, who's got a better credential and a better resume around the area than that guy? The throws he makes, I saw him some three weeks ago make every single throw. He was on time, on target every game. But what about as a whole? Because there's not just McSorley and the Dallas. you got Loki also. No, no, but what I, right. I'm, I'm getting to yeah. as a whole. Gotcha. Uh, you, you said, Caleb, you made the statement, Caleb Henderson, as great as he is, is the best quarterback in the area. I'm throwing up an alternative to that statement. Okay, and I'm, uh, that's a good argument. I mean, uh, Trace a is a great argument. player. Don't tell me it's a good argument. It's a great it's, argument. It's a good argument. It's not, I mean, okay, but let's keep, that's a great, keep moving. All right, so let, now let's keep that. You look in the area. You got Brad, and if you want to stay in the Dulles District, Brad Loki at Lyon County, really getting the job done. Jake Loki. Throwing to Brad Zoka. Brad Zoka, See, I got that's my right. Jason and my yeah, Brad's mixed up. All right, anyways, but, you know, as good as anybody around, but just not getting any love because they're just not getting any love this year. Why? I don't know. Uh, Knutson at um, Knutson down in Hayfield. Knutson yeah. Hayfield's yeah. very, very good. Swing all at, at Briar Woods. I mean at uh, Battlefield. I'm getting <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah, uh, Reitzel at Broad Run is a great quarterback. So uh, it goes on and on and on. You get into the Liberty District and you got Burns. Yeah, and, and uh, look, at the end of the day, I think the answer you're saying is false. <laughs> That's Concord, what I said in the beginning of the man, day. Man, we, we went all the way around the world on that one, and finally we got back to the same thing. You agree with me. There you go. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, Good, I'm glad you had some names. We just got to work on getting the right first name and the right last name. You're all right. Just combining all these guys. Uh, <laughs> moving on, Madison can and will beat Stonebridge. Ooh, this, is a great, this is a great question. True or false, Bruce, if there's one team that can beat him, it's Madison. Nobody else has ever beaten them, but this team has beaten them. Seven and one, and they got a little magic to them. If there's ever an opportunity for Stonebridge to fall, this would be it right here this year. I, I think this is it because Madison does match up and play smash mouth football with Stonebridge. They do. Now Ben asked the question: Can they? The answer is true. They can. Will they? The answer is false. They won't. But I mean, that's look. 
they know that they've beaten Stonebridge as a program. Now a lot of these guys that are playing, they weren't there. So they weren't even, these guys weren't I, even born. The it team wasn't that, that long ago. It was three years ago. But you're right. <laughs> Look, they have the only win over Stonebridge. So you got to think in their mind. Coach Schultz is talking to them. Hey guys, we've done this before as a program. These guys aren't invincible. That's what he's telling them this week. So that's true. They can do it because they found a way to win seven straight games, which means they know how to win games. Will they? I don't know. I, I, I guess we got to give Ben one exception here in the questions because they are pretty good. <laughs> I, I kind of cheated and read them ahead of time. You're doing okay until you get to this one. This question, give me a break. This is false. Yeah, can they beat them? You can go to Laurel Island Boys Football League and Bill Allen Field and take the C League team out there, which are eight and nine year olds, and say, "Can they beat Stonebridge?" The answer is yes. Anybody can beat Stonebridge on any given day. Will it happen? Absolutely, positively, definitively, not. Will this game be closer than some no. think? All right. I mean, Madison and, and, last week shut out Fairfax in that entire second half. Ooh la la! <laughs> against a good, a, against a talented Bang. Fairfax Whoopsie team. Well, the one thing you I'm, said it. Well, it's Stonebridge's defense. Madison gonna be lucky to score. Yeah, the one thing about this Stonebridge team is that you're gonna see a huge discrepancy, in my opinion. If they play their A game, Stonebridge comes to play. It's going to look like Stonebridge and then everybody else in the Liberty District. I mean, that's how they. That's how good they are. So, that's how I would describe yeah. it to you. Is it going to be close? It could be if Stonebridge doesn't play well. And don't get me wrong. I'm picking Stonebridge to win the game. Right. I mean, I don't think yeah. that – I mean, uh, just for the purpose of the question. And it's as a great question. Madison was able to beat Stonebridge, I know, well, a few years You can't ago. ever underestimate the value of momentum, you know, and, and the belief that you have all of a sudden in your abilities when you've won seven straight and nobody's talking about you, nobody's giving you credit. You know, it just keeps burning inside like, you know what, we'll prove you again. We'll prove you wrong, Bruce Bornart. We will put your foot in your mouth for you this week and beat Stonebridge. That's how Madison's thinking about this thing. You're getting Madison's momentum confused with K-State's momentum. <laughs> go Wildcats. Huh? <laughs> Another go. team that's had some momentum here, Stonewall Jackson. Well, they finished the regular season undefeated. Their final two games against Broad Run and Woodbridge. That's not a bad question. It's a great question, and, and, uh, and, and I don't know that they can beat Woodbridge. Uh, I think they can beat Broad Run based on what I saw. Broad Run, a good football team. Still struggling a little bit to stop some of the big plays from happening and so forth. My opinion is, is no, it would be false. They will lose one of the next two games. But this Stonewall Jackson team is for real. We're going to have this game televised this week for you at Broader and High School. Watch Stonewall Jackson. Get an opportunity. Because they're doing some special stuff. Their offense is fun to watch. And I think Coach Doherty really does have a team that can go contend. And, and I, you know, I think they're going to run into a problem because they've got to play Woodbridge, which is a really athletic team. It's going to give them some problems. But I, I think they can at least finish 9-1. and one. Yeah, I, I think it's false. I don't think Stonewall is going to go undefeated. I think they're going to lose at least one of these two next games. And I think it's going to be the broad run game this week. And you don't think I'm crazy. You look at the score last week, what was it, 35-14, to 14, I think, in the game we did against Battlefield. You look at the stats, and they're not real impressive. But if you watch the game and, and, you know, you kind of studied a little bit, and Broad Run had some chances, and I think they're going to get back in and correct those mistakes. And I wouldn't be surprised if Stonewall is maybe kind of looking ahead more so about that undefeated season against Woodbridge at the end and not really focusing on this team. Stonewall hasn't been here in a long, long, long time in this kind of position. And I think this is the week that Broad Run gets things corrected and comes back and, and kind of shows people who they are. Let's not forget, Spartans have only lost one game in the district, and they still kind of control their fate. They got a chance to, to at least clinch a share of the title this week if they can beat Stonewall. And again, getting back to Stonebridge here for the next question. Uh, is the Liberty District underhype? We talk so much about the Concord District. <laughs> The Liberty District has kind of flowed a little bit under the radar, besides Stonebridge, of course, who we're talking about every single week. But is that district underhyped? Uh, this year it is. I think it is a little underhyped. It's true that that's a, a true statement. I, I, you know, I, I give Coach Thompson and the guys a hard time at Stonebridge all the time about the way that the Liberty District has been in the past. It hasn't been very competitive. But you're starting to see a little change in that. Langley's been better. Fairfax is much better. Kevin Simons is doing a great job down there. Madison, look what they're doing in year two under Lenny Schultz. All of a sudden now they have three, four, five teams in this district. Thomas Jefferson with Ken Kincaid right on the verge of, of popping in the playoffs here if they can get a big win this week. McLean, a good football team. I think overall 
The Liberty District is probably overlooked now a little bit as a quality district. And, and it's just because of the past. I, you know, in, in years past, it hasn't been very competitive. It's been Stonebridge and nobody else. There needs to be some new blood come into this deal and say, Stonebridge, you may get us here every now and then, but you're not going to get us every year. And that just hasn't happened. It's just been so top-heavy, and that's why people kind of look at it as a bad district. But it's really not. It's not. I think it's, I think it's become one of the, the more consistent districts here throughout the northern region. Yeah, I, 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 think, it's, I think it's barely false. I, I think they're hyped right about where they are. You know, a lot of what Andy just said is true. The Liberty District is getting better. These teams are getting more and more competitive. You look at some of the games within the district, some of these games outside the district, and I think the barometer may be how does the Liberty District do – against the Concord District. And I think we're seeing more competitive games. We're seeing better teams. We're seeing better coaching throughout the Liberty District. Here's the problem. As everybody else in the district is getting better, as Andy said a few minutes ago, Stonebridge is up here and here's the rest of the district. Well, as the rest of the district is getting better, Stonebridge is getting that much better also this year. So the separation, I think, hasn't changed. In fact, I think Sombridge separates themselves a little more so this year than they have in years past. It doesn't mean that the rest of the district is not getting better. I love how he can say barely false, right? He comes up with these answers that are kind of like, well, kind of. You know, I mean, well, seriously, the master of the spin. I'm going to give Bill O'Reilly a, a run for his money. All right, final true or false question here, guys. Uh, Thunder Alley, the Chantilly Chargers, little pregame ritual. Is it the best pregame ritual by a team? True well, Bruce, Bruce is just hardcore to answer this one right away. Go ahead, Bruce. What do you got? Ben, my buddy, I love this question. Now, see, this is the kind of question we should have in off defense. Isn't this called off defense? That was our radio show 10 we, years ago. We, we got inside the huddle, whatever this is. We got so many different games we play, and you know what? They're all basically the same. I didn't tell you that. But anyway, look, uh, th this is a great question. And the answer to this question is definitively false. Let me jump right off of the fence. You want to talk about the best pregame hype in the world, let's go up to Shirando and Traveler, Scout, Hank, Popeye, whatever the guy is, horse's name up there. You got Shirando gets up on those stairs. They got like, I don't know. Four levels or three levels of stairs coming out of a big, huge landing in the middle, and the team comes down and down and down. And the next thing you know, here comes Hank. Hank. Is Hank the name of the horse? Hank. I like Traveler. Hank I like Traveler there. better. All right, so here comes Traveler and a painted up engine on that thing, riding out onto the field, and boom, drops that spear like Florida State in the middle. You tell me where it's better than that. Yeah, I mean, but I'll say Thunder Alley's pretty good. I mean, I the one thing I'll say that's different about Thunder Alley is. The, the fans go nuts at Chantilly when they kick that music on and they see the smoke start coming out and then they start hearing Thunderstruck and all of a sudden their team starts walking down that. I mean, that's pretty special stuff. Now, when they're good, when Chantilly's good and that crowd is like it should be over there and it's jammed, it's goosebumps. That, that's what it is. So I'm going to say Chantilly number one, she rando number two as far as atmosphere because the way the team makes the entrance you know, they kind of come through the smoke and everybody's jumping up and down. I mean, it's – right, can, can, can awesome. I give an honorable mention because it doesn't exist anymore? And, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think you're going to agree with me. Okay. At Broad Run, when the Maroon crew used to be in the end zone. Yes. And you had yes. to come between those bleachers with the smoke machine and that huge banner that yeah. they came through. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. doesn't exist anymore. But that that's was a as shame. good as any. That's a shame because that atmosphere that was building right there in the Am end right, zone. Am I agree with that? I'm oh, as good as any. Listen, in the 2007 game between Broad Run and Parkview that you and oh, I called goodness. together. That atmosphere was second to none in this area in Loudoun County. And I'll tell you, I think the worst thing ever happened was that the bleachers are no longer allowed to be in the end zone. I, you know, whether, whatever, whatever you have to do, fasten them in the ground, whatever you have to do, get them back. Because that, I thought that kind of encouraged more school spirit from the broad run kids. And, and they were building something there. That, that was incredible. It really was. I'm, I agree with you on that. It's not around now. But that was becoming a great tradition. The team, as a matter of fact, the visiting team would walk through there. And remember, they were letting them have it. I mean, it was awesome. It was a great atmosphere. I remember it got to the point where visiting teams would go around the yeah. bleachers instead of going in between them. They just right. split up and kind right. of go around them. You know, the, the only other one that I would say is pretty cool, and this takes me back in the day at Westfield when Mike Glennon was there. They used to walk all the way from the, the building. Yeah. And the crowd would all be focused on them walking down. It's a good hike. It's a good 200 yards from the building. 
and they could start, you know, you'd hear Lou Nister, the, uh, the PA man, start talking about here come the Bulldogs, and everybody would turn around. I mean, that, that was pretty cool, too. So we have some great traditions, but I'm going to put Thunder Alley as number one up there here, in my opinion. So that's good stuff. Way to go, Ben, on the questions. And that takes us into our spirit battle this week. Bruce, the spirit battle is on, okay? It's Centerville and the Wildcat Nation taking on Westfield and the dog pound. Now, there, there's some talk out there already that this won't be close, that the dog pound is going to crush the Wildcat Nation in the spirit battle. But understand one thing. Centerville has great school spirit. I saw it last week. They were jammed in the stands way before Chantilly was. And they were they're doing their white out. They had a big sheet they held up when Chantilly came running out to cover their eyes. Nobody wanted to see them. They, they brought it. They had some great stuff. So why do you think that, that they would not have a shot this week. What do you think? Well, let me ask you a question. I know the answer is, but where's the game? It's at Westfield. All right. I, a lot of people say I'm dumb, and, and it may be the case. But I'm not blind. And what I can see is nobody's traveling this year. No spirit battle is won by the visiting team. None of these schools and none of these student bodies across the board are traveling. Now, I don't count going across the street to play your rival as traveling. I mean, maybe we should change the spirit battle and, and let's recognize the team that travels the best the farthest. I don't know, but that won't happen. But having said all of that, this game is literally almost right across the street for Centerville. But I still am going with a home team. That's one thing trend that I think has held true this entire season. The home teams are winning the spirit battles. You know, Ben, I, th- I think Bruce has a point. We are seeing a little bit less traveling from the student sections in, in 2012 than we did yeah. a year ago and a year before. Don't know why. I guess it's just not fun to hop in a car and drive. But at the end of the day, do you feel like Centerville will show up here in this spirit battle? I, I think they're going to show up, and I think they're going to – but I'm still picking the dog pound here in this one. I, I like what they did last week in the game that I, I did for Westfield. They uh, – Oakton, of course, were in their togas. They had a Coliseum thing across the way. I don't know what that was going on. They, but over <laughs> for Westfield, they had uh, they were all in their pink shirts because of breast cancer awareness month. And then uh, right before the game, certain they had picked out certain kids in the crowd to spell out a W. They all ripped off the pink shirts. They had black shirts on underneath. We couldn't get it on camera, but I, that was pretty cool. I'm not, I'll yeah. admit that. And, and Westfield fans are just great. I mean, the dog pound. Centerville at home, I would put them up. The, no visitor team is going to beat Centerville at home, but, West, but Westfield at home, same thing. I mean, I think they win the spirit battle. But i got to tell you now, last year for the Northern Region Championship game, that was a draw. I mean, Centerville packed that place. Playoff I mean, game, you can't count playoff I, game. But, I mean, this is a championship game, and there were probably 10,000 people there. But there was nowhere to sit on the other side. Now, that's all I'm going to say to you, Centerville. You want to win the spirit battle this week? That's the way it has to be. This is a huge game. This is for the Concord District Championship right here. Your team has a chance to defend its title, right? Westfield has a chance to defend its title. Centerville has a chance to claim a share. They didn't get it last year because they lost at home, right? So I mis- mistakenly said that. But the fact of the matter is, is Centerville brought the school spirit to Westfield last year as well as I've ever seen. Even better than the Chantilly time that we, we talk about all the time. So I, I'm not counting out the Wildcat Nation here. They had the powder. They had, the, they had the flower, which has now been banned by Fairfax County which Public Schools, been. which it should have been, because who wants that? It was their, cool once. In there, I mean, I went over there, and, and I had flower all over me last time I did a stand-up with these guys. Look, here's the deal, Bruce, before I make my pick with you. You know, the Wildcat Nation showed me some love last week and game day some love, and we really, truly appreciate that. The Dog Pound has kind of been a little bit contentious with us this year. They've been a little upset, and it's for, for this reason. We've called them out a little bit and said, ah, they're not going to win. We've just been kind of seeing if they're going to travel. Now, I'm going to make one exception to your little rule there. The one student section that has traveled has been Westfield. They don't have to this week. The whole home side will be jammed with Westfield students. This will be the big showing, in my opinion, of school spirit. Centerville is going to have to bring it beyond our even imagination here to win this. I'm taking the dog pound. The dog pound, I told you were, they were my favorite a couple weeks ago. They've had the best school spirit across the board as a whole all season long, and that will continue here on Friday night. Now, something real quick, a uh, uh, serious uh, editorial note here about Westfield, and, and it's something that, that Ben said when he talked about them in their, in their pink shirts for the Breast Awareness Week. You know, 
a lot of causes are supported in the area by the schools, and rightfully and gratefully so, and, and many, many thanks to the people that benefit from those. But I'm going to tell you what, nobody supports a cause visually. Now, now, now don't, don't get me wrong and don't hammer me because a lot of places – probably equal the funds and, and whatever, the work and support of them. But nobody visually supports a cause like the Westfield student body. I'm talking about wearing the pink. Whatever the cause is, you know that Westfield represents it and is behind it. And yeah. I think that's a credit, and thank you guys. Yeah, we had some great, uh, great pictures here from last week. That's it for Inside the Huddle. We'll step aside for a quick break here and come back with our picks of the week right after this. 4G LTE has the fastest speeds. So let's talk about coverage. Based on this chart, who would you choose? Wow. <laughs> guys, take a minute. All right, so hands down. I'm going to show you guys another chart. <laughs> pretty obvious. I don't think color matters. Pretty obvious. What's pretty obvious about it? <laughs> Verizon has the coverage. <laughs> Verizon. Verizon. We're going to go to another chart. It doesn't really matter how you present it. I tell you what, it doesn't matter how you present it. Verizon. More 4G LTE coverage than all other networks combined. Trust is one of those things that's earned, and at Max Muscle, we're really very concerned about the relationship we have with individuals, whether they're the student-athlete, their parents, coaches, um, administrators, because we take very seriously that commitment to children. What we're doing is saying, help your student, your athlete, your coach, your parent become healthier. And our message is about nutrition, and you know, fundamentally, it's about eating. Stop in and talk with us. We're definitely going to talk a lot about it. nutrition. We want to educate the student, the athlete, the parent, answer any questions, and get that athlete started on the road to success. Find the Max Muscle Sports Nutrition Store near you, or online at maxmuscle.com. Welcome back here to Game Day All Access. I'm Andy Hayes, joined alongside Bruce Bornarth, Ben Simpson. Time now for our picks of the week. Bruce Bornarth is chasing me down here in the picks. Eight and two last week, or were you we seven, seven and three? three? I was nine and one, but we're all chasing Chris Barassa. At this point, the man is out there on, a, on an island by himself. So congrats to Coach Barassa. He's whipping our tail. Now, our producer, Helene Shane, who has been tied with me the entire year near the top, had a tough week last week. Bet with her heart, not her mind, lost four games. So we're kind of all, you know, having a little sympathy for Helene. She's got a problem. She's only got a couple weeks left here, Bruce. What do you think, man? You got a chance to catch us or what? (laughs) I got one word for you when it comes to Barassa. Simulator. (laughs) He said that on the air last week, by the way. He did agree. He did admit to that. Ben, you're you're kind of hanging around, hanging yeah, around, but it's it's not looking. Good. I wouldn't bet against Helene though. I think you I think, think she's I, gonna I, come I, back. I think she'll come back. Four game deficit going into this week's picks. Let's go ahead and get started. First game we're gonna talk about is a big one in the Concord District. Two teams that need to get into the playoffs with some momentum, and they've been having a hard time getting that going here the last few weeks. Robinson and Oakton. Robinson heading down to Oakton High School here on Friday night. And this is a game where you're going to see a great running game from Robinson and a, and a team that has a great quarterback in Oakton that can do it in, in all different ways. Mike Wandy also having a great season. Uh, the question here is defense, in my opinion. Right? Who's going to stop who? Bruce, who do you like? Robinson's going to love his pick because I'm going to take Oakton. What else is new? You, just, you can't pick Robinson anymore, can't can you? Do it. It's against your grain. Just can't do it. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm picking Robinson. I don't think Oakton can stop Joe Wilson. I mean – they, uh, when Robinson played a team like Westfield, when they played these other teams that has better defensive lines, Wilson struggled a little bit. But against Oakton, I think this is a no-brainer. I think Robinson's going to be able to win this game. That's a, that's a bold pick. I mean, you're going to Oakton yeah. saying that Robinson is going to get the win. The one thing that concerned me about Robinson two weeks ago is they couldn't stop the pass. They couldn't stop you know, Lake Braddock. Lake Braddock had their way. And they couldn't run the ball in Lake Braddock. And I think Oakton is, is as good as Lake Braddock in a lot of ways, both sides of the ball. So I'm going to take the Oakton Cougars here. I think Oakton rebounds and they get a big Concord win. Moving on to the next game. This is a close one here, Bruce. Langley and Fairfax. This could be a thriller. This could be a triple overtime game. That's the way I look at it. 
Who you like? I was getting ready to say that this game is a candidate for game of the week when it's all said and done. There's always those couple of games that seems to be this season that you look back on the, on the week's games and there's a game or two that are just wow. You know, you wish you'd have been at that game. And I think this may end up being one of those games. I like what Fairfax is doing. You know, last week they had that lead. They lost what may be in their minds a heartbreaker uh, in the second half of that game. Langley, I said in the beginning of the season, was one of my – Picks to watch them as the most improved team or surprise team of the season. And, and I, I like what's happening at Fairfax, but I think I like Langley in the game. Yeah, a great running matchup here in this game with Nick Scott and Philip Munn. Uh, I'm going to go with Bruce here, too. I, I think I've seen both of these teams. I like what Langley has been doing. I'm, I'm going to pick Langley on the road. You know, the thing that really uh, concerns me about Langley is they went down to Yorktown. Yorktown was able to run the football on them, and, and they were kind of able to slow down Philip Munn a little bit. The one thing that makes me excited about Fairfax is Nick Scott. I, I think he's one of the elite players in the area, and he's just done it all year long. I think he's going to have a big game this week, and I'm going to pick Fairfax. Now, the one thing about the Fairfax Rebels that they haven't been doing lately is finishing. They haven't been closing games out. you got to do it, guys. I'm on the hook here. Everybody's taking Langley. I'm taking you, Fairfax, in a big, big game here in the Liberty District. All right, Kettle Run at Warren County. Now, this game was looking like it was going to be two 8 no teams a couple weeks ago. All of a sudden, Kettle Run has fallen on some tough times. Two straight losses here, and now they're at 6-2. Warren County pretty much can clinch the district and, and walk into the postseason as the number one seed in, in Division Three here. But this game still matters because last year's division and region champ, guess what? That's Kettle Run. They're coming to town, Bruce. What happens here? And, and I think that... That's the key. It's last year's experience. Kettle run, the run they made. They're, they're not used to, in recent times, losing two games in a row. And I think they bounce back. I just don't see Kettle run losing three games in a row. On the flip side, Warren County is a playoff team. I don't see them going undefeated, though. Yeah, I'm picking Warren County here. I think I think they get the win here. But I do agree with you there that Kettle Run, I think this run of losing games is going to be ending pretty soon, but not this week. Yeah, I'm with Ben on this one. And, and one big reason, Kettle Run lost a couple of players. Their two D1 guys uh, are not playing here right now. In my opinion, Warren County is the best football team nobody's talking about. And Coach Talent has just done a tremendous job out there. And I like, I like the Wildcats here. I think you got to take Warren County in this game. And I think it might even be a two-touchdown, three-touchdown game. That's where I think they're going to beat Kettle Run this week. All right, Jefferson at McLean, our buddy Ken Kincaid. I'll tell you what, he's done a great job at Thomas Jefferson. To make them relevant toward the end of the season, where they've come from, it's a miraculous coaching job, in my opinion. Deserves a ton of credit. McLean right there, Jefferson right there, 4-4 four and four and 4-4. Four and four. Winner of this game pretty much has a great shot at making the playoffs. Loser is going to be tight, so... Who wins it, Bruce? What do you like? Well, what's the team in the water, boy? Alabama Tech or something like that? <laughs> whatever whatever that school is. That, that That's kind of like Jefferson, you know, coming on and coming on and chugging and chugging and chugging and, and starting to make a statement. But do they climb the mountain and get in the playoffs? I'm not sure. I like McLean, especially because they're at home. Andy, you've been hyping up Ken Kincaid all year with Jefferson. I think you finally got your way into my head. I'm going with Jefferson here on the road. Yeah, Patrick O'Connor. Remember that name. He's the bruiser. He's like Mike Allstott. Remember that name, Bruce? Mm -hmm. He's like the Mike Allstott of this area. He's a bruising tail back, and he will bring the pain this week for McLean. Take Thomas Jefferson. Somewhat of a little bit of an upset on the road. Not a whole lot anymore. Jefferson playing some good ball. All right, Stonebridge at Madison. Here you go. Bruce said it, no way, no way, no way Madison can win this game. I don't care if you've won seven in a row. You could have won 700 in a row. It doesn't matter. You're not winning this game, Madison. Bruce, not with Mickey Thompson. What's she saying? I, I think you just said it for me. You, is that how you really feel? Yes. 700 in a row wouldn't matter. Doesn't matter. They're not beating Stonebridge. I never said 700, but. I remember, I remember. <laughs> A similar conversation back in 2009. <laughs> uh, and again, I'm, I'm agreeing with Bruce the fact that I'm picking Stowbridge in this game, but I'm not agreeing with Bruce in the fact that he thinks this is going to be, you know, it's a no-brainer, it's an obvious pick here. I think, I think Madison has, has a shot in this game. I don't think they're going to win the game, but I think they have a bigger shot than you might think, Bruce. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. Don't ever underestimate that, Bruce. 
problem is Stonebridge has the heart of a champion, too. So they're both the same. Take Stonebridge. They're more talented here, and they win this game. All right. Woodgrove at Tuscarora. Coach Mike Skinner's club at Woodgrove. Trying to get some respect back in the area. Traveling down to Tuscarora. One way you can do that is beat the Huskies on their home turf and pretty much knock them out of capturing the number two seed because if Tuscarora can win their next two games, they would be the number two seed in Division Four behind Briarwoods. Woodgrove trying to improve their status a little bit in the seedings and so forth. If they can get a win, it could be a statement kind of win here. Maybe they get some momentum back and make a run. What do you think? You know, despite what Coach Skinner thinks, I love what's going on at Woodgrove. I really, really like that program. They don't like you, by the way. I know. They don't. They don't. They don't. The, 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 the problem is Woodgrove is young. Now, if this was next year, I, I think maybe so. But Woodgrove is is learning. The ground. And I'm going to tell you what, they are huge on the line of scrimmage. I know. That is a big team. They've got some talent. They've got some speed. But I think that they're, at this point, kind of chasing Tuscarora. And, and they haven't quite pulled even yet. I like Tuscarora in this game. I wonder why people don't like you up there. Well, I mean, the Woodgrove I just people, said I love them. The Woodgrove people have been very upset with you this year. They, but they, it's a very young team. I'm not saying they're down They and made and They made some posters in, of you, and then they lit them on fire before the game. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I told you. I, I, I'm oh. singing their praises. I'm just, I'm just saying I'm kidding, that man. they're losing to teams that are better than them. What's and, wrong with and that? And kids, don't do that. I was just teasing. All right, Ben, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think Woodgrove, as Bruce said, I think look for this team next year to really make some huge strides. They're already making strides this season, but next year they'll make that jump. Tuscarora gets a win here. I'm going to disagree with you guys in a sense. I don't think they're that young. I don't think they're that young. I don't think Wood, Woodgrove's the same as Tuscarora, the same years in, in existence. The difference has been is that, you know, Coach Skinner just got there this year and is putting the things in place for them to be successful a long time from now. And, and Coach Burnett has been doing that for three years down at Tuscarora. And, and I think what we just said. No, I, I think That's the exactly difference. What we just but said. they're not young, though. They have seniors on this team. They have good quality athletes. This is not a youthful team. It is. Go look at the roster. Well, I'm just saying they have some guys, but they're juniors and seniors it's primarily. Very, very heavy junior but talented team. They have enough upperclassmen that they should be able to win a game like this. And I think they can win a game like this. The problem for Tuscarora in this game is a, it's a matchup problem. Woodgrove is not a great matchup for them because of their size and how they like to push you around a little bit. But until Woodgrove beats a good team, I mean, I mean that, a good quality football team, you can't pick them. You know, and they may not like to hear that, but that's what's on the table. you got to man up and beat somebody good, and then we'll pick you. Because they didn't do that. They didn't show up against Loudoun County. They didn't show up against Briarwoods, and nobody's showing up against Briarwoods this year and giving them a game. But you got to beat somebody good. Well, here's your shot. This is your last shot here before you get to the playoffs. Beat Tuscarora. Show us who you are. Are you a team to be considered or not? That's what's on the table. I'm taking Tuscarora until Woodgrove shows me that they can beat somebody on the road who's a quality opponent. All right, time now for Skyline at Sharando. You know, there were some people on this set here a couple weeks ago that maybe had written Sharando off. Three losses. Oh, Sharando's just not the same this year. They can't win the Northwestern District. Oh, here come the Warriors. Five and three now. And with a win this Friday against Skyline, who's 6-1, and one, having a great season, the Warriors would take the inside track at defending their Northwestern District Championship. Bruce, can Skyline come in to Arrowhead Stadium with all of that on the line and beat Bill Hall's club? What do you think? Are we still playing true or false? True or false? Uh, I think it's false. I think Sharando at home is a different team than they are on the road. You know, Skyline, not going to get it done in... So you're, you're taking the 5-3 and three team over the 6-1 and one team? Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Ben? Um, so am I. So am I. I think Bruce exactly right. This team at home, I wouldn't bet against them in this game. The problem with uh, Sharando is they're, they're playing with a sophomore quarterback now because Reed Ensminger's out for the season. I talked to Bill Hall last night. He said, you know, Josh Ojo is going to be a, a great player for, for them for a long time, but they've had to kind of start over a little bit getting Josh up to speed on – you know, offensively, what can they do with him? I mean, it's a tough spot here for Sharando. And I think Skyline is that team that could expose that a little bit. That said, Sharando has a great defense, led by George Aston, the linebacker. I'm telling you, he's one of the better ones in Division Four. you got to check him out. So I like the Sharando defense to be the difference in this game. I think they'll shut Skyline down. I'm with these two guys. Take the Warriors. Of course, 
My Stephen City people know I'm Andy Shrando Hayes. Why would I choose anybody different? All right, time now for Stonewall at Broad Run. Bruce said this is when it all ends for Stonewall. The magic will be done on Friday night. Broad Run, homecoming night. What do you think? Does it return to Ashburn a little bit? A little, little mystique in there, return on Friday night? I think the Maroon crew is back in force for homecoming weekend. Andy's theme of magic season this year, I think – the magic kind of ends a little bit this week for Stonewall. I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if Stonewall is maybe looking ahead at the Woodbridge game and kind of maybe underrating Broad Run a little bit or underestimating Broad Run a little bit based on last week and and the games leading up to that. But I really like what I saw last week in Broad Run, even in that loss, even down what two three touchdowns in that game when it was finally over. Okay. I think if Broad Run fixes the mistakes and plays a cleaner ball game, then I think they can win. I like when our picks are a little different here. It's been a little different week, and, and I'm going the other way. I'm going with, with Stonewall here. I think, uh, I think they're not looking ahead of Broad Run. I, don't think, I think they're definitely going to be uh, preparing, the, preparing for Broad Run just as they will be preparing for Woodgrove next week. And I think Stonewall can, while Broad Run's going to bring, the, the fans are going to be out there, as you mentioned, homecoming. But uh, I think Stonewall is a, the better football team in this matchup. So I'm, I'm picking Stonewall. Ben, you said it. They are better. And they beat the team that beat Broad Run 35-14. Bruce, you can't look past it, okay? For Stonewall to go into Battlefield and beat them that way, to go up against Battlefield, who's been the team to beat in Division Six, that says all I need to know. This is a team that can score. They can score quickly. And if you get them down, they'll come back and score again, and they'll jump up. They know how to win. I'm taking Stonewall Jackson. I, I can't believe I'm saying that because normally that wouldn't be how it is, but this is a different team. This is a different Stonewall team. Mike Doherty's done a great job down there. This is the team that's going to be broad run on Friday night. Now we move to North Stafford at Battlefield. This is a great game. 7-1 North Stafford coming into Battlefield, who's 6-2. and In Battlefield, this is a non-district game here, so it doesn't hurt them for the C to run. But you don't want to drop this one, though. You know, because then you're, you're possibly losing some seeding here in the postseason with your record and so forth. So it's an important game. Battlefield won this last year, 27-13. You like them to win again? Yeah, yeah I do. And, and, and it's not maybe because of, of the, the arm of Ryan Swingala and the way he played last week. He was really on target last week. He had a really good game throwing the football. But the way that Battlefield controlled the line of scrimmage and took the run and the inside between the tackles away from broad run, I like that. I like Battlefield's defense to get it done. And as, as the stats guy, I will definitely agree with Bruce completely. Swingle last week, 16 for 19, 242 passing yards. He threw for a touchdown, also rushed for a couple. He was terrific in that game. And I think also he'll be terrific in this game. I think Battlefield gets the win. You know, I was looking at the records of all the teams that North Stafford has played this year, and the one team they played with a winning record they lost to. Everybody else has been near 500 or below, and they've won those games. Well, now they're going to see Battlefield, and they're a good quality club. I don't bet against the Bobcats at home. Not happening. Take, take Battlefield. And now we get to the game of the week. The, the rematch of last year's Northern Region Championship game. The rematch of probably one of the most hyped regular season games in, in a lot of years for us over the past, what do you say, six, seven broadcast seasons. These two games a year ago were classics. Now we roll into the 2012 meeting. Centerville comes in with a group of guys that – they were standing on the sideline last year watching us. They were cheering like Bruce and I. They were fans. They weren't in this one. Westfield's got the same thing. All their guys graduated too. But they got it at home. And they're 8 0. Centerville 6 and 2. Something's got to give, right? You're counting out Centerville in this game. I know you are. The, this is like, like ping pong. You, know, you go back to last year. Who won the last game? Centerville, in dramatic fashion in the end, knocked Westfield out of the playoffs. You don't think the Bulldogs are remembering that? It, it, it's payback time. This, this means seeding for the playoffs. This means undefeated possible season for Westfield. I don't think the Bulldogs let that slip away. Yeah, I think that loss last year is still burned in the mind of every single Bulldog fan. Even the guys who, weren't, as you mentioned, weren't on the field for that game, they still – uh, felt it just as, you know, in the locker room and as being a member of that team. And I think Westfield, they get their revenge here, and they, uh, they put the hurt on Centerville this week. Even the guys that didn't play a ton last year, they were mad. 
for Westfield. I mean, they, they were upset. And I'm going to tell you, Bruce, you're right about this. They've been waiting for this game. I'm telling you, Centerville better get ready because Westfield is going to hit you in the mouth from start to finish. And this one matters. May not make a huge difference in the big picture as far as seating and so forth, PowerPoints, whatever, but it is going to matter to the kids in black and gold. Remember a couple years ago, this was back in 06, when Westfield lost on their home field in the Northern Region Championship game to Chantilly. You remember that? Yes. The next opportunity they had to play Chantilly, Mike Glennon and crew came back, and they, they got after him and won that game at home, one of the great atmospheres we've ever seen at Westfield High School. It's going to be the same way here on Friday night. The atmosphere will be unbelievable. The game will be heated. Trust me on this. Westfield wins this game at home based on the play of their offensive line up front. It's not that I don't believe in you, Centerville, but you're going to see a team that will punch you in the mouth for four quarters, and they're not going to let up. You're not going to have that opening like you had last week against Chantilly where you can come back. And Centerville has typically fallen behind a little bit here this year and then rallied. Not going to happen this week. Take the Bulldogs. And that does it for our picks of the week. We're back right after the top ten plays here. Playbook. Well, I don't think they like Burns getting sacked like that, so they probably want to come out and try that again with some quick passes, and there is that quick pass to Yarbrough, who makes a spin move, keeps running, and he is going to go for that touchdown we were talking about. Big play by Deontay Yarbrough. Took a 10-yard spin move off of a pass and took it the rest of the way. 62 yards for a Stonebridge touchdown. Fullback halfback behind Black. He has a man to the far side, out wide to his left, but he's going to hand it off to Scott. Scott to the right side. Scott's gone. He is gone down the sideline. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. Nobody's going to catch him. That's why you can't give him room. Nick Scott to the house, 81 yards, touchdown, Fairfax. Burns hands off to Daly. Daly goes off tackle, finds some room, shaking base, goes down the middle. Daly's going to take it all of the way on the second play from scrimmage. It's a stone bridge touchdown. Second down at seven. Romine again sends DeAndre Harris to the right. One back in the backfield. Now he'll step back to throw. Looking for a man down the field, and it's caught inside the 30 to the 20. Ray Sean Smith touchdown, Chantilly. Empty backfield for Machette. Motion by Farrar. There's a snap. There's the reverse, and it's a flea flicker reverse. Fires it, looking for Farrar. He's got the catch. He's inside the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Vikings. Filthy good right there, baby. That was a oh. filthy good play. Razzle dazzle and heave it long and let Logan Farrar take care of the rest, and the Vikings have their first lead of the night. Ten Spartans. Broad run down seven to battlefield, 8.40 left to go first half. Inside handoff, Hilbreth sweeping around the corner. He's got the corner in front of the Spartan French. Hilbreth still on his feet, makes a move at the 50, cuts back to the middle. He may be gone. Green grass and high tides in front for Corey Hilbreth and six. Mullins looking to pass, has a man, blown coverage, 40. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, all by himself. Touchdown, Bulldogs, number 34. He did it again, Devon Burns. First down and five from the six-yard line. There's Walter, hands it off. Turner makes a cut at the five, runs over a guy. Touchdown, Wildcats, A.J. Turner. Well, you saw the combination there of speed and power. Tommy Vance comes up and hits him at about the two-yard line, and Turner just, here we see it, coming off the wing. He's got a blocker in front of him. Vance lines him up at the two, and he just bulldozed him. Can the Woodbridge offense get enough protection around it to prevent a block? You have Levin Bear, you have Wright. Can they get their hands up enough? Here we go. For the game for Woodbridge. Hernandez is ready. There's the snap, the hold. The kick is up on the way. And it's through the uprights and good. Woodbridge takes a one-point lead with 47 seconds left to go in the game. Taking advantage of the McMillian turnover, and they get it. 
I'm almost wondering if they would just just as soon start them on the 35 yard line to prevent kicking it to that. It's just going to be a little a squibbler right there. And it's taken. And he's got himself an opening. And he's going down the sideline. He beats his man. He got tripped up. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Are Elton. you kidding me? Holy cow. What the heck just happened here? A miracle. What did just happen? A miracle on Spriggs Road. Wow. We're back here on Game Day All Access. Time now to take a look here at the Week 10 Power Poll as we look back at last week's action and talk about the changes here. Let's throw up on the screen the top 10 for this week here as we take a look at our best 10 here in the area. Stonebridge at 1, Westfield followed them at 2, Briarwood still at 3. Those three have held serve for most of the season. Stonewall Jackson makes their first appearance in the top 5 here with the number 4 spot. Hilton moves up to 5, followed by Yorktown, Lake Braddock, at seven, Centerville into the top ten as well at number eight. And Madison at nine. They move up one spot after their seventh consecutive win. And Warren County comes in at number ten here. Guys, some thoughts on this one. Madison, seven straight wins, only at nine. Is, are we not buying into what, what they're doing? What do you think? Uh, I think so. I, I think Madison maybe deserves a little bit more love than Hilton jumping right back into the pole that high up. I, I question that you said it during the show hilton struggle a little bit they're winning the game right but they're struggling look at madison i i, I, I can't believe i'm giving all this love to madison this week i think Ms. madison deserves to be higher yeah what do you think ben yeah, i mean definitely. That, and, and who else stands out to you centerville with two losses at number eight they're above madison with one loss you like yeah, that yeah no I, I definitely i definitely mad as bruce said madison definitely needs to be higher in this poll and, and centerville i think schedule uh, conference schedule alone is Big reason why they're in this top ten too, and but they got a big game against Westfield this week, as does Madison against Stonebridge. That that might change things up a little. You bit. know, one team making their way back up to the top of the ladder is Lake Braddock, right? And they had a couple tough losses early, Centerville, Westfield, but now we're seeing Centerville, Westfield, two of the better teams in the area, and Lake Braddock hasn't dropped a game since. So now you're starting to see Lake Braddock maybe gain a little bit more respect. They're at number seven. The one team I have a question mark on is Yorktown, and our power pole guru, Thomas Hembrick, is not here today. We had a chance to talk to him about this, but six in, this, in the power pole this week for Yorktown. They're undefeated. Coach Hanson doing a great job down there at Yorktown. But who have they beaten? That's my big question to you. You know, who have they gone on the road? They did beat Langley, who we like. But can they beat some of these better teams in Division 5 when the playoffs come around? I don't know. Well, I, I think they're probably right close to where they should be. If you're undefeated, you have to give some love and respect simply for that you know, and, and, and put them in the middle of the pack right there against some of these one- and two-loss teams that you could maybe make an argument or from a better conference. But this goes back to the argument of the poll from way back when we, we've always had this disagreement and, and discussion as to what do you do with, say, an undefeated double-A team versus a one- or two-loss, maybe Concord District type of a team. And I think the, the, the poll is – you can explain a lot better to me that it's not necessarily the best teams, one through ten, who could beat who. Are there teams lower in the poll that probably would be favored against maybe undefeated teams higher in the poll, triple-A versus double-A? Yes, but that's not really what the poll's about. Well, it's kind of like the top 25 in college football. I mean, I, I don't think you have to go very far to see an example. I mean, you see the Boise States and the, you know, TCUs and those in, in years past when they weren't in big conferences, you know, being ranked in the top 10 where a lot of people thought, well, there's no way they can line up against a quality opponent and, and win those games. Well, they've shown, that, you know, everybody can win one of those games. You know, can you win all of them consistently? Ah, you know, probably not here. I think the difference is when, when you take, a, a, with all due respect, a Yorktown team or Liberty District team or a double-A team that's undefeated, they fall a lot harder with that first loss than some of the other teams. Right now in this poll, we have six undefeated teams. Our top four teams are undefeated. Our sixth team in the poll is undefeated. And our tenth team in the poll in Warren County is undefeated. Any of those teams falling this week? Anybody dropping down? You, you already picked Broad Run. i got Run Warren County going down. i got Broad Run winning over Stonewall. So you think we're going to be down to a couple less here this week. What do you think, Ben? I think it's going to stay pretty much the same. Because I, I picked Stonewall winning that game. Uh, I think I picked against Warren County. Uh, so that might be the only only one I can see changing. Any any chance Westfield on upset alert this week with Centerville? That would blow up the top three, and they've been there all year. What do you think? 
uh, yeah, they're always on. You know, anytime anybody's playing anybody in the Concord District, it's been proven over the years that it's an upset alert week. Yeah, that'll be a great game to follow here. You know, Stonebridge has a chance, I think, to lock down number one in everybody's mind this week. You take down number, you know, nine Madison with seven straight wins and you thump them, then we know there's no debate, right? Westfield's still trying to make a case. Yeah, we had one bad kind of off week defensively. Other than that, we've been awesome. And maybe they deserve, after if they paced, you know, Centerville this week, maybe they would deserve some consideration for challenging Stonebridge if the Bulldogs would, were to struggle against Madison here for that number one spot. But uh, overall, our top ten, hey, it's, uh, it's full of pretty good football teams. There should be some movement, though, as we see some big games for all of them. Bruce, I kind of agree with you with Hilton at number five. They've moved up a little quicker, but I think it's just been based on the fact the teams behind them keep losing. And so they've been able to kind of jump over some folks. But uh, that does it here for our game day power pull talk this week. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time here on the Game Day Broadcast Network. This exclusive broadcast has been presented by Integrated Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy. Get back in the game. The game of life. The game on the field. Manhattan Pizza. Now serving Ashburn, South Riding, and Leesburg with the best dang pizza in the world. By Max Muscle Sports Nutrition. Max Muscle. Partners in health. By Online Mental Trainer. Optimal thinking. Champion results. Visit ReadWriteTechnology.com. Verizon Wireless. The exclusive wireless network of the Game Day Broadcast Network. Game Day All Access. Become a Game Day MVP member today and never miss another big game. Phenom Strength and Conditioning, where athletes train to exceed expectations. Any reproduction of today's events without the express written consent of Game Day Properties LLC is strictly prohibited. All rights reserved.